Hey, I'm Jared Zimmerman. When I'm not working on cars, I'm out looking for things that are fast. I drag my family along to all kinds of crazy stuff, and uh, it's not like me to take a step backwards. So this time, instead of going to look for fast cars, we're going to take a step forward. We're going to change the pace and go to space. We're going to find exactly what's happening over at NASA right now at the Kennedy Space Center, which is somewhere I've always wanted to visit. So I'm going to drag the family along to see the next step in space evolution, which is the launch of the Falcon 9 rocket. And what's most important about that, this is NASA's first time of trusting an independent company to carry a very important payload, the TESS satellite. The first thing we came across was the Rocket Garden. It's an open air museum of the who's who of space exploration. Every rocket was at one point functional, except for one, and that's a lot of rockets. That's a lot of outer space. These things are way bigger than you could ever imagine in person. And so were the engines, like the F1. In the interest of looking at cool things, finding machines with big horsepower, a nod definitely has to be given to the F1 rocket engine. The most powerful son of a bitch ever made. This is the most powerful liquid-fueled engine in the world. And it's nice it's named F1, kind of like Formula Un, although they have nothing to do with each other other than all an ass. Now here's the thing with this engine. It makes over 1.5 million pounds of thrust. Let's just call it over 1.5 million horsepower. Now you strap five of these crazy things to the Saturn V rocket, which was 6 million pounds, stood 36 stories tall, and they just shot it up into space. They made 7 million pounds of thrust together, and nothing exploded. It actually worked. They were on the most powerful, biggest vehicle ever built. And it was the loudest noise ever created next to a nuclear bomb going off. There's another major thing. Think about that. I mean, it's just totally guy stuff. You got explosions, you got massive horsepower. It doesn't get any cooler than this, man. I wasn't alive to see these rockets when they were firing off into space in person. I wasn't there for that. But what I was there for was a space shuttle. However, I'd never seen any of it except for being on TV until now. got to the space shuttle I had Gavin and I had Jared and Jared had regressed in age so I'm trying to cart around to 12 year olds. Oh yeah! Look at that! That is the external fuel cell and two rocket boosters from the space shuttle and it's mind-blowingly giant. Everybody in the world's got to come see this thing. It's so cool. Now it's a little sad because they don't fly the space shuttle anymore but the Atlantis is inside of this building we're gonna go see that but really what we're here for today changing of the garden, manner of speaking. You know, we're gonna go see the privatized thing, the Falcon 9 rocket take off and get launched into space. That is just awesome though. Okay, back to my tour. The Space Shuttle Atlantis was shipped over to Kennedy Space Center in April of 1985. About six months later, it was being launched into space. It flew a total of 33 missions, the last of which was flown in July of 2011. Now, what's amazing about that is to behold this craft in front of you and you can see all of the war wounds displayed there prominently in front of you that proved that it left and came back 33 times and it wasn't an easy journey. So we got to see the Atlantis but now it's on to the future. When we first got off the bus tour we walked into a building and it was the Saturn V and Jared was on it. F1 rocket engine, pretty impressive piece sitting on the ground pretty big sitting on the ground as well. But when it's attached to that big pencil called the rocket back here, they're absolutely ginormously, new words need to be made to even express how large this machine is. And they produce over 1.5 million pounds of thrust each. Why is that? Well, because they're attached to something that is several hundred feet long, and it basically stretches the end of this building. It's, uh, it's, it's huge, really huge. See this enormous chunk here? It's first stage. Just throw it in the ocean, I'm done with it, don't need it, expendable. Look at the technology just oozing off of this, the second stage. It was powered by five J-2 rockets, which produced a million pounds of force. Once the rocket hit the upper atmosphere, it would detach from the first stage and push the rest of the rocket further into outer space. And then when it was done, it's just throw it in the ocean. Done with that one too. All right, so then that takes us all the way to the front of the rocket where we have the command module and the service module. And basically that would detach itself from the rocket through a series of jetting and whatnot. They would turn around, pluck their payload out, get it to the moon, and then return home. But that little Hershey's Kiss looking thing that's splashing down in the ocean, that's the only thing that comes back. Unlike today's Falcon 9 rocket, where the rocket is actually reusable. The stuff on the top goes out, the rocket comes back in a, what looks like a completely made up science fiction way. But it happens. So 
Jared's looking at the Saturn V. Gavin and I rush outside to set up our camping spot as it was because we knew it would still be some time. And that whole time, you know, they scrub things all the time. So you're thinking, is it scrubbed? There we go. And then they started the <laughs> countdown. Oh, my God. And the SpaceX launch director is go for launch. So now it's down to the final few seconds, just over a minute to be exact. And there was a family next to us from France. And if that rocket didn't go off, they would have traveled over here in vain. And then it hit us. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. This Holy here. cow. Woo. Yes. Oh my God, that's bright. Oh, Once the rocket took off, the first thing it hits you is you see the, just the building white smoke below it, and then the brightest light you can ever imagine. Even in broad daylight, it lit up the whole sky like a welding arc. And then the sound and the concussion. Eight, yes. Seven, six, oh, the sound. Five, Holy three, two, oh SpaceX Falcon 9 carrying Tess, a planet hunting spacecraft that will search for new worlds beyond our solar system. You could almost see the sound wave coming across the water. It was amazing. Oh, oh so change man I have to see another one and we have confirmation of preparation confirmed and stage confirmation is confirmed hey here's a random thought for you guys you know those kids in class that really like math and sci-fi and all that we call them nerds or poindexters they totally want those nerds those are going to be the kids that grow up to build these things and last time I checked NASA wasn't paying these kids in peanuts. We left that place and got passed by a McLaren, a Mercedes, I mean, all the M words that come from over the pond that you can imagine. And you might think about that next time you're maybe down on one of those kids. They could be the ones propelling the human race into the future.